There was one factor which was called executive dysfunction. Because your brain is impacted, you find you're having lots more challenges, planning, organizing, strategizing, paying attention to details. Yes. Uh, and managing your time. It's important for managers to recognize that stress, I mean, stress is the biggest killer that we face in general, but that stress triggers some of these things where the employee is just not on the ball. Maybe they're not being as we'd like to, this probably sounds awful. We think they're being lazy. They're not being <laughs> lazy. They literally can't access that smart part of your brain because I know when I don't get a good night's sleep, I move at half speed the next day, frankly. So interesting that you and your former industry actually had a name for it. Well, sometimes certain drugs help activate that. And sometimes people go off and need to be recharged. But of course, the leadership role is to make sure we don't lose our people to stress. And I would have to assume that most managers who've managed through COVID, if you remember, we were very much focused on how people were feeling yes. as opposed to making calls or being productive initially. A change right. went back to what we normally do and even helping employees. We do all types of training in sales, right? What can they do from that skill piece? Number one, I think you said recognize that this may not be an activity issue, but then let's go to the other side. What are some things they can do to create an environment that decreases that burnout and stress? Are there one, two or three things that you've seen when working with sales leaders? 100%. I mean, Quite simply, it could be stress management courses, which are workshops, which everyone in the organization can benefit from. You know, one of the biggest issues that people experience burnout is when all of a sudden they feel they're overloaded with work. There's just too much going on. And some mm -hmm. of that comes back to effectively managing your time. Some strategies, because there are lots of things in every single job that we do, of breaking it down into buckets. Very simple approach. We have revenue generating activities, which at the end of the day, you want to do more of those. We have job related activities, which sometimes are things you have to do. And then we have this pile of stuff. And when you start to look at it, there's lots of what I call time sucking activities. And you want to eliminate those because you want to have your time and energy on what's going to make a difference. So for the manager, it may not be teaching one more selling skill. It sounds like it's teaching priority management, productivity skills. Because if they can get their days back in control, and I guess it's called working smarter, not harder, that actually is going to decrease their burnout and stress. 100%. And also, you know, there's simple things we can do as leaders. When you're working hard, it doesn't cost you anything to provide recognition to your salespeople. Yes. Yeah. Right? Because then we feel good about what we do as opposed to we're doing, 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 and then we feel bad. We feel more stressed. Stuff like setting clear expectations. How many calls should they do? What are the expectations? If I work on a weekend, can I take some time off during the week? You know, I'm at a conference for three days. One of the biggest things that I think leadership, it's incumbent upon leadership, not just from a burnout perspective, but one of the biggest levers that we pull is setting quotas. And okay. if we have unrealistic quotas and people don't feel that they're achieving, I know my high achievers They'd be pulling their head. I'm doing everything I can do, Stephen, but I'm not hitting quota. And it does lead to a cycle of negativity, feeling that you're not doing enough. You know what? And it's interesting. The quota is either not set correctly or they haven't taken the time to do that tedious work. At least I found it. You go through the numbers, how we're going to achieve the numbers, analyzing. And so as a result, maybe the quota is fair, but they don't know how to get there. So what does a leader do in that case? They have to help show them the pathway. Exactly. You exactly. Know, what, are, what are those critical success factors that are going to make a difference? And coming back to time management, focus on those key revenue generating activities.